What's going on, beautiful people? It is I, your flying locomotive, and faster than a speeding bullet supercliff, coming at you live with a brand new video. And for today's majestic and fantastic video, we are continuing with Chip Zdarsky's Batman, issue number 136. But before we get things started with everything that is Batman and, you know, Gotham related and punching bad guys in the face, if you are new to the channel, then smash that like and subscribe button. That way, you guys never miss out on anything that happens on this majestic channel. So what are you waiting for? Let's raise the bar and go full on Super Saiyan. Hit that subscribe button. Thus, without further ado, let's get to the action. Let's save the day or night, if you will, <laughs> with Batman issue number 136. So our story picks up at 6.20 p.m. And here we have Mr. Terrific running some tests and scans on Batman underneath Gotham City, given the fact that Bruce just returned from a different multiverse. So yeah, you gotta make sure that he doesn't need a tetanus shot or something like that. <laughs> Anyways, with Batman expressing his gratitude to Mr. Terrific for checking him out, we get a sense in the scene that those close to Batman are worried about him. And it seems Bruce isn't willing to talk about the stuff that's been bothering him. And let's not forget, Bruce, he now has a cybernetic hand. And so because of that, he doesn't want to worry the Batman's family any further. He doesn't want to add fuel to the fire. From there, Batman gets the update regarding Gotham from Tim. And what Bruce learns is that following the Penguin's death, two of Oswald Cobblepot's children showed up and started running the Iceberg Lounge. And on the other side of things, Selena Kyle, you know, aka Catwoman, well, she recently broke out of Gotham County, along with a handful of convicted inmates. And this, of course, bums Bruce out because it seems Selena is going back to her villain days. Later on, while Bruce is meditating in this brownstone, it's here he reaches out into his mind and calls out for Zarina. Now, basically, this is a scene to show that Batman is now back in charge and that he no longer requires the aggressive presence of Zarina. However, Zer finds it interesting that Batman would choose to lock him away rather than destroying him, thus begging the question of whether it's because he couldn't destroy Zarina without destroying his own mind in the process, or is it because Bruce actually needs Zer. Afterwards, the Dark Knight tracks down the Cobalt twins, whom are shown to be expanding the Iceberg Lounge business practices, dipping into the gambling side of things, opening up off-the-book gambling rooms. And because Bruce has been gone for a bit, it's time for Batman to remind the underworld of who's really in charge. Afterwards, we pick up with Selena Kyle, buying a bagel from a coffee shop in the east end of Gotham City, where she's going incognito with a blonde wig and oversized round glasses. And can I just say, I'm getting Michelle Pfeiffer vibes. However, this disguise cannot deceive the Dark Knight. And with that, the bat confronts the cat in a dark alley, letting her know that they need to talk. Finding a quiet spot to chat, and with Selena taking off her disguise, Bruce gets right to the point as he confronts her about her prison break. Bruce then goes on about how he doesn't understand why she rejected his help, since his lawyers could have gotten her out legally. But it's here where Selena disputes that, and she preferred getting herself out, instead of having to use Bruce's money, and that she's a ghost. And maybe it's time now for a fresh start, something new like Oswald. And that's when we see Bruce go into complete shock and utter disbelief, as Selena reveals that although she knows Bruce is probably still hung up on not being able to save the Penguin, it was all a lie, and Cobblepot just wanted out of this life and escape from Gotham. And from there, Bruce breaks down, and he lets Selena know that after the Penguin framed him for murder, Failsafe, aka an android created by the Batman of Zarana, was activated and came after him in the Bat Family, all because it thought Batman killed Cobblepot. With Bruce feeling betrayed that Selena kept this information from him, he tells her that he was banished to a different Gotham in another universe. And when he met a Selena Kyle there, he couldn't help but love her too, because that's the kind of hold that she has on him. But in the end, the other Selena betrayed him. With that, Selena tells Bruce that she's not some other Selena, for she's the real deal, the OG. And with her walking off, that's when Batman gets a break in alert from the censors at Wayne Manor. With Bruce racing towards the manor, he eventually makes it into the Batcave, but upon his arrival, Batman hears commotion coming from the manor. He cautiously heads upstairs, only to find the entire Bat family working together to prepare a dinner, a way to celebrate Bruce's return. With Batman joining his family at the dinner table, it's here where Batman begins feeling the poison effect deep down. For Zur has poisoned his mind with insecurities and has placed doubt in his head and heart. Essentially, he's making Bruce feel as though he's useless, inadequate to be continuing on as Batman. And from there, Bruce in that moment, in his mind, sees the people that he loves and cares for start to burn in front of him. For this is no doubt a warning for things to come, for there will be a day when Batman's entire world gets burned to ash and dust. And that, folks, was the end of Batman, issue number 136. And thank you guys for checking out my video, as it truly, truly means the world to me. So yeah, I gotta be honest, this run has definitely, for me at least, 
hit a bumper. You know, think about it more so now, the second arc really wasn't that good. It wasn't terrible, but the word forgettable definitely comes to mind. But the one thing that really pisses me off, and no, it doesn't piss me off where I'm like raging in front of the computer screen, but it did leave me disappointed, that being the book's art. WTF. <laughs> like, guys, DC, this is Batman, your flagship title. It's your superstar destroyer. What are you doing? I don't want to come off like a dick, but the art sucks. I've been trying to restrain myself for these last few months, but Christ on a bike, <laughs> it's bad. It's just messy, it's not attractive, and granted, Gotham City is not supposed to come off super sexy like Miami or Metropolis, but the look of Batman comic book should look appealing to the eye. Now, you can make the argument that comics basically redo past stories all the time. I agree with that to an extent. I wouldn't just plainly write out, define it as that, because there's much more to storytelling than defining it as something as like, you know, a redo or a rehash. But God damn it, it just felt like in this issue, there's something identical to past Batman books, like stories we've already seen play out prior. And I don't know how to explain it, but it just didn't feel fresh like Sadarsky's first arc. Now, although I didn't hate the issue, I didn't feel a need or a want to continue with the series. So yeah, I think I'm done covering this book, unless the series gets back to George Tremendous' art or someone different. If not, though, you know, if you wanted to dip out, this might be the best time to do it. So yeah, as always, I'm your majestic sayer of words, Supercliff. And if you guys are new to the channel, then do me a solid by smashing that like and subscribe button and also the notification bell so that you'll never miss out on an upload and that you'll always be kept up to date with your favorite top tier comics happening in the comic book world. Now tell me, what are your thoughts and opinions on this issue? Are you guys excited for issue number 137, which I believe won't come out for a while given we have the Night's Terror event coming down the road? But yeah, let me know down in the comment section below. And until the next video, peace. Giggity goo.